Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Emily here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Um, thanks for joining us online this time. Because it is November, it is Native American Heritage Month, and it is the week of Thanksgiving. So instead of having our regular Sunday school type activities, faith explorers in between services on Sunday morning this week, we are, I would like to share a few books with you. I think it's really important to talk about indigenous people's histories, and especially um, with what month it is and with Thanksgiving being this week. So I have a few stories that I would like to share with you. And um, there are some words in different languages, so I'm going to do my best to pronounce them the best that I can. But it's important for us to learn other languages and explore different cultures, learn about them, um, and to know history from, from many perspectives. So you can get these books at the, at the library if you would like. We're going to read Fry Bread and When We Were Alone. So we're going to start with Fry Bread today. I hope you enjoy this book. This is Fry Bread, written by, written by Kevin Noble Mylard. It says, Fry Bread, a Native American family story. Fry Bread is food. Flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar. All mixed together in a big bowl. Fry Bread is shape. Hands mold the dough flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove, the fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet, the bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color, golden brown, tan or yellow, Deep like coffee, sienna, or earth. Light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor. See beans or soup, smell tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history, the long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world with unknown food. We made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place. Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. Cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Oglala Sioux, Narragansett, Navajo, Nipmunk, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac and Fox, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, west. Brown, yellow, black, white, familiar and foreign, old and new, we come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change, and survive. Fry bread is you. And that's the end of this story in the back of the book. If you get this book from the library, you'll get to see that there 
is a recipe for how to make fry bread. So if you check this out, if you've never had fry bread, bread before, I recommend um, getting the book or looking up a recipe online. Maybe you can do that together this week. All right, and our next book, When We Were Alone, this is by David A. Robertson and Julie Flett. When We Were Alone. Today, I helped my cucum in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nukum, why do you wear so many colors, I asked. Nukum said, well, no sisa, no <laughs> When I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same, and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that, I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Nookum said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. But sometimes in the fall, when we were alone and the leaves had turned to their warm and autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground. We would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Nukum said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate and they reached all the way to the ground. When my cucum tried to, <laughs> turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nukum, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nukum said, well, no see some? When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all of our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that, I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Nukum said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring when we were alone and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair they had given us and we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. Now, Nukum says, I always wear my hair very long. After my Kukum had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, Napinesis Michiso, Thomas Sikitayan, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Kaisian, Thomas Kaisian. There we go. Those are kind of hard words to pronounce, right? Learning a new language. And those words mean, here, little bird, eat, so you will get big and strong. And her words sounded just like a poem. Nukum, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nukum said, well, no see some. When I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words. And we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language, I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Nukum said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. But sometimes in the summer when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree so that we wouldn't we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. 
and this made us happy. Now, Newcomb said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my kukum in the, yard, in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet and the bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My kukum and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nukum, why do you and Nukomis always spend time together, I asked. Nukum said, well, Nusisim, when we were your age, at home, in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nukomis separated, I asked. They didn't like that we were with family, Nukom said, because when we were together, we thought too much of home. But sometimes in the winter, when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts, and in the crisp, cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nukum said as she reached over and held my uncle's hand in mine, I am always with my family. That's the end of that story. I hope you enjoyed these stories today. I hope you learned something new. Um, and learned a few new words as well. Check these books out at the library. I encourage it. Have a good one.